Well, thank you very much, Nina, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the TEDx Sydney Business Hive. My name's Sam McCool. It's my pleasure to be back here to host the Business Hive, and in particular, the St. George Kickstart Finals for 2018. Are you excited, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Of course you are, because you're not the ones about to be pitching for your life here in just 60 seconds' time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this program, the St. George Kickstart Finals, is a first-of-its-kind uh, program for any Australian bank. It's actually the fifth year that St. George has been involved with TEDx Sydney. They've actually been involved with TEDx Sydney longer than that little, since that little dragon was a giant green egg, ladies and gentlemen. That's how long they've been involved. Five years, and in that five years, they've given away nearly half a million dollars to people like this who are about to present their brilliant ideas. $425,000 to kickstart a business into fruition, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is, it's why is St. George involved with TEDx? It's very simple. TEDx and TED Talks are all about ideas worth spreading. But what St. George does is take those ideas and invest a little bit of funding from provision of grants to take those ideas and turn them into a commercially viable venture. So ladies and gentlemen, this competition has raised hundreds and hundreds of entries from around Australia. And the judges have netted down to just 12 finalists. Six of those finalists are sitting here, anxiously awaiting their chance at stardom to pitch their brilliant business idea. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is some strict criteria that has been applied. First of all, their idea can't just be any idea, right? We've all got ideas. Have you got ideas? Yes, you've all got great ideas, right? But they've taken initiative to apply for this program, and their ideas are judged on four key criteria. The market opportunity that that idea addresses. What is the strategy behind it? How does that address a particular problem in the market? Also, their delivery. Do they engage with the audience? How clearly do they articulate their idea? Also, how are the funds going to be used? $40,000. Do they put it towards their mortgage? I don't think so. That will just be a vicious circle. It's actually got to go towards their business idea and get it into action. Am I right, guys? Absolutely. Good. OK. So, and the final thing, of course, is out-of-the-box thinking. That is what TEDx is all about. If you can't see that, just have a look at the stage. It's round, no corners. Have a look at the carpet. Round, no corners. Round balls. Everything is round in this place, except for the square monitors. But we'll work on that for next year. So ladies and gentlemen, we have two categories. This morning, we're going to do the first six who are pitching a new idea for a new business. And then this afternoon, we're going to be doing category two, which is a new idea for an existing business. Um, Without, uh, well, I'm just going to be waiting anxiously just for one more moment while I introduce the esteemed judges who will be judging all these pitches. Each contestant has only 60 seconds to deliver, and we're very, very strict on that. Ladies and gentlemen, starting from, uh, from my left hand side over here, we have, of course, Kathy Yunkin, the general manager of St. George Business Banking. <clears throat> Thank you for applauding. It's her money they're giving away. So. And of course, we have Sean Chadwick, the head of uh, marketing for business banking. This is what they refer to as an offsite for the day. That's good. And then we have uh, none other than the founder and licensee of TEDx Sydney, ladies and gentlemen, Remo Jufre. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, just to see where you can go by winning this particular event, we have a previous winner of the St. George Kickstart Finals. Uh, a lady by the name of Helen Mitchell, who is co-founder of BusyVid, ladies and gentlemen. BusyVid is so successful now that she can take a day off work to be here to judge other people. So, well done to you. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get ready, underway with our first pitching. Are you excited? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to do one thing before they come up on the stage. I want you to, you don't have to close your eyes, but I just want you to imagine for a second that it's you that's about to get up and pitch your brilliant idea. You've got 60 seconds to make that reality. I would like you to think of yourself about to get up on stage, and I would like you to welcome them to the stage as if it was you. Can you do that for me? OK, so let's give them a thunderous round of applause, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, and please welcome to the stage our first contestant from Puffling, Sarah Parker. Thank you very much. Almost 50% of women leave their job after having children because of the lack of flexibility offered to them. I'm one of those women. Part-time work at the same senior level was near impossible. Puffling changes this by creating a community of experienced women who job share. Like a dating site, 
The Puffling algorithm matches two part-time candidates. They date, create a joint CV, apply for a job on the site, and then interview together as a team. Two heads, double the experience, and five-day coverage in the office, plus 30% higher productivity. Now, we've proven demand and that JobShare works using this model, but we need your help to scale. Winning Kickstart will allow us to build self-serve for business, utilizing JobShare to retain existing employees and to acquire new female talent, increasing gender diversity. Please help us change the future of work. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah, okay. fantastic presentation. Just stay on stage for a second. That's wonderful. I, really, uh, I think everyone's really excited about that idea, of course. I almost said Sarah Packer, but if you were Packer, you wouldn't need the 40 grand, would you? So uh, just tell us quickly, how did you come up with Puffling? So Puffling is a baby puffin, and puffins mate for life, and they share all their responsibilities, and they can actually hold the most amount of birds in their bill, so meaning they can forage for longer and they're more efficient. So it's a nice analogy for our Pufflings on our database. I love it. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Sarah. I appreciate it. OK, ladies and gentlemen, the calibre just keeps getting, I don't want to say better and better, equally as good, OK? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage our second contestant from Checkbox, Mr Evan Wong. Hey. Hi, I'm Evan from Checkbox, a company that is transforming regulation into software. See, regulation costs over a trillion dollars a year, but it's the way we manage it that's broken. As an example, one of our customers was spending 50 Excel spreadsheets just to manage the one regulation. Using Checkbox, they transformed that messy process into this. It's a software that walks you through the regulation question by question with automated calculations, an audit trail, and automated documentation. But this is not Checkbox itself. This is actually just an example of software that you can build using Checkbox without touching a single line of code. Users use drag and drop, and they can build applications in not months, but actually in just days, and sometimes even hours. And so you know what's crazy? We have big four accountants, bankers, insurers, lawyers building software. And we have a big opportunity in Asia, and the Kickstart program will help us deploy overseas. So help us get there outside of Australia. Thank you very much. Evan. Fantastic, impeccable timing. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Brilliant pitch, of course. It looked like if I was wearing your trousers, that's how I'd have probably end up like. So, <laughs> Evan, fantastic job. And right on time, 50 Excel spreadsheets sounds like a lot. So, a lot. that's obviously a good idea to get rid of those. But um, let me just ask you quickly, the logo, how did you come up with that? Uh, well, basically, I thought about my favorite bank, um, and then I just basically matched their color. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have an announcement, ladies and gentlemen, from the voice of God. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> Oh, that was it. Okay, very important announcement. Uh, for those of you here, never mind, just stay here. That's great. Well, you haven't missed a thing. No, you went. We're right just getting started. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our third contestant. We're going to keep powering along. Uh, we'll please welcome the stage from Inclusity, Mr. Joel Coelho. Thank you. Great. 1.5 million Australians have a physical disability. That's one in 15 people that can't run to safety in times of an emergency. A disaster can strike anyone, anywhere, and at any time. But there's nothing out there dedicated to ensuring that those with a physical disability can get to safety in times of an emergency. Our app, Inclusity, aims to bridge the gap between you and safety. We aim to do this by giving you the autonomy and confidence in getting yourselves to safety. We intend to do this by, giving, by uh, mapping out internal spaces and giving you the quickest evacuation route based on your location. It can also be used to, build, uh, to map out internal spaces and find accessible pathways. If successful today, the Kickstart funds will go towards acquiring devices to map out internal spaces and finishing the app. Our vision is an inclusive Australian society that empowers people with a physical disability. And we need your help to turn this into a reality. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, Joel. So Excellent. Thank you. Now, you have a very interesting last name, yes. Coelho. Any relation to Paolo Coelho? My I favorite wish. Book? I wish it was. No? <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? Definitely. <laughs> Excellent. So, Coelho is Portuguese yes, for rabbit, I understand. That's right. That's Excellent. right. Very interesting. How did you know that? I Googled you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, Joel. Sam.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're halfway through category one, the idea for a new business. I hope you're inspired. I hope you're actually thinking about what you're going to pitch next year when you guys are on this stage. I can see you nodding, sir. Yes, we'll save space for you. Good, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're up to our fourth contestant, and please welcome to the stage from Neuroimmersive, Rowan O'Reilly. Hey, all right, thank you, thank you. Hi, now imagine if you can that you're one of 50,000 Australians every year that's had a stroke. Now you would think that's a bad thing, but your problems are really only just starting there. The real problem comes when you're going to do rehabilitation. Now the present state of rehabilitation for an upper limb, hand and arm, involves you sitting in a desk and doing movements like this over and over again, which aren't very exciting. So what we've done at Neuroimmersive is come up with a totally new way to get the brain back into a hyper state of repair and learning, neuroplasticity, by creating virtual re uh, reality environments with a special new technology called haptics, where you can go into a beautiful environment that reflects exactly what you're used to doing and actually interact with objects that you can feel. So your brain is getting neuroplasticity on steroids. Now, why that's so relevant is, you can imagine, for example, like Kylie, if you're a mum with young kids and you can't use your arm, it's a really big problem. So our early trials to date have basically produced an increase of up to three times the rehabilitation process. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Rowan, excellent, wonderful presentation. I was gonna ask you. you how you came up with your logo, but I definitely see the resemblance, I don't think, uh, <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. How did you come up with the name? Anything interesting there? We just wanted something that would sound cool and techy. Excellent. That does sound cool and techy. Well done. Thanks Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. You know you're cool and techy when you've got a T-shirt with your own logo on it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to understand how to come up with a really cool, techy name for your business, just do what these guys do. Take two words, merge them together, right? Neuro, immersive, inclusive city. That's so good. Very creative, guys. Check and box. You didn't even cut it down. That's good. <laughs> Puffling is an actual word, you know, yeah, that's good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, okay. Our fifth uh, presenter today is from House Technologies. Please welcome to the stage, Peter Neal. Imagine living in a house that's naturally cool in summer, yet still warm in winter, without air conditioning or heating, effectively reducing your energy consumption by 85%. House Technologies has international patents for a simplified construction system that makes traditional framing obsolete and produces stronger houses that are completed in just six weeks, not six months. These affordable and sustainable homes shrink your carbon footprint by combining well-established materials for better energy efficiency and quality at no added cost. Winning Kickstart will enable us to demonstrate our system in a local community housing construction project and give us leverage into global markets. Smart construction is the future of housing that we can deliver today. Thank you. Excellent work, Peter. You made it. <laughs> you made it, you made it. You did a very, very good job. Uh, now, everybody else has gone with two names put together. You've gone with a completely foreign language name. How are Australians going to understand what that means? Well, we, we took it because Europe has such a fantastic insulation requirements for houses. Yes. And that's where the whole basis of this is, in, is actually building a building envelope that is energy efficient and it just keeps rolling into all sorts of benefits. In Europe, they have to because it's very cold, Peter. Exactly. Yes. I just understand you've got a bit of an exotic background, though. You worked on television in other countries? Uh, yes, yes. We try and broad the broad spectrum. Broad spectrum, yeah. okay. Well, that's what we're trying to paint today. Thank you very thank much, you, Peter. Thank, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got one final finalist for this morning's category. I hope you're all going to come back and join us this afternoon when people pitch their idea for an existing business. Very exciting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for our final contestant? Thank you. I would like to keep that applause going and welcome to the stage from Otlet, Madeline Green. This is a biological sample from a great white shark. Now, I run tests on it. It gives me the information I need to conserve the species. 94 million of these samples are collected a year, with the majority of them able to be reused for other projects. However, due to a lack of communication between scientists, we see these samples are often thrown out, left in freezers, and we're wasting time, money, and it means that more animals are sacrificed for science than needed. 
Now, Otla provides a simple solution. It's an online marketplace where scientists can share, source, and request biological samples from around the world. Now, if every scientist shared just one sample they'd collected in the year, we would reduce the recollection of 30 million animals. Now, we've just launched Otlet, and we need uh, our business model relies on a large number of users, so we need the Kickstart grant to grow, we target marketing, user testing, and hiring a head of science communications. Now, with better use of these small samples, we have huge outcomes for the world. Thank you. Madeline, fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I understand by day you are actually, because I see lots of different animals on the screen there, yes. and a dragon. Um, <laughs> but I understand by day you're a shark scientist, is That's that right? That's true, yes. What's your favourite shark? Uh, I work on hammerheads at the moment, so I've, I've got a soft spot for them. You've yeah. got a soft spot for hammerhead. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they've got a soft spot for us too. I try and avoid them. <laughs> My favourite is a wobby gong. But thank you very much, Madeline. Well thank done. Thank you. Great presentation. So, the judges look very busy tabulating their scores. As we said, there's four different criteria they're going to judge from. Thank you very much, ladies, for sitting through the presentations. Uh, while they're deliberating over the uh, decision, ladies and gentlemen, I want to quickly just share a story. Who was here last year to watch the Kickstart finals? A few people? So, for the rest of you, I just want to give you an idea where, where this can go, uh, what these 60 seconds can mean to these guys here and to yourselves if you decide to take part next year. Last year, there was a young guy who arrived here. He looked like he should have been a TEDx youth. He was so young. I mean, basically, he had designer stubble like you, sir, just to blend in and make him look older, right? He came from a company called Patched Medical. There was an idea for a new business. He was young, he was confident. He gave a 60-second pitch. And that 60-second pitch not only won him his category and $40,000, which kickstart their business idea, but more importantly, or just as importantly, it got him noticed. And the publicity from winning this particular category at the St. George Kickstart Finals actually launched them because they were noticed by a, a group called the Public Health Network. Has anybody heard of the Public Health Network? Well, you obviously work in that industry. For... I'm also a ventriloquist in my day job. So the, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, he got noticed and the publicity from that, the Public Health Network is a government-funded um, not-for-profit, and they actually invested in them. They set up a meeting, set up an agreement, end up with a partnership, and now those two young guys are living and working in the U.S. on their prototypes and on a phase trial to make their idea come to fruition. And within a year of being here, doing a 60-second pitch, they can have an internationally successful global business. So that's where it can go, ladies and gentlemen. Are the judges ready? They look ready. Okay. So on that note, I would... They are ready? They're not ready? They might be ready. They're still thinking about it. Okay. So that's where, are you guys excited? Do you know who's won? Would you like to make a decision for yourselves? Because the judges are taking too long. Are we tabulating the results? What do you guys think? Did you, who do you think? I'm going to put you on the spot. These guys down in premium economy, thank you very much for joining us. You guys, unfortunately, cattle class, what happened? Um, what do you think, sir? You've been paying attention. Uh, Any favorites? Puffling, yes, but you can call it puddling. That's a different, <laughs> different business. I think that's avoid water hazards. Okay, so you got your arms crossed. You, 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 what do you think? All of them. All of them should win. You want them to split 50 grand between them? Yeah. They sound excited about that. Okay, you're very neutral uh, decision, sir, madam. Any opinions? Puffling. Puffling. Oh, there seems to be a good. Cat you've been paying attention to everything. Oh, you've even laughed at my jokes, which yeah. is. Puffling. Oh my God! Well, I don't want to influence the judges, but ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> don't get your hopes up. They're not the judges. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, to announce the actual runners-up and then the winner, please welcome to stage Kathy Yunkin, General Manager of St George Business Banking. Thank you, thank you, Sam, and thank you everyone for joining. I cannot tell you how hard it is to judge. You were all amazing. Your delivery, your ideas, the out-of-the-box thinking. It is extraordinary. I only wish each and every one of you could be a winner. But thank you for everything that you've done to get us here. Without further ado, um, because we are short of time, I'm delighted to announce that the runner-up of the Kickstart grant for $10,000 to um, for a new business idea is Sarah from Puffling. <laughs> Thank you. 
big congratulations to Sarah and Puffling, which did have a lot of supporters there in the room. Now, um, the, of course, the big prize, the $40,000 grant. I'm delighted to announce that that goes to Madeline from Otlet. Well done, Madeline. <laughs> Thank Congratulations. You so much. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. On behalf of St George, we are so proud to be supporting small businesses with big ideas worth spreading. Enjoy the next session of TEDx Sydney. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Kathy. Let's don't forget we've got another category on this afternoon.